Alright. What's up guys? Welcome to episode 14. So what I thought today we would address, we, we actually did it nine months ago, uh, addressed the defense against the buggy choke. So this raises a couple of issues, first of all. Isn't it called the mousetrap? Yes, that's one of the issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, I want to address it because we, uh, what I did is, uh, if you looked at the ADCC trials, it was quite used quite a lot and it was used with spectacular success and spectacular failure. Uh, you had J-Rod, he actually uh, wind up using an iron fist to, to finish, but uh, I think also even though it's, uh, uh, might have been sort of slightly different finish, uh, the buggy choke set it up, or mousetrap set it up, in a way that allowed him to, you know, after his guard got passed, to get a submission and win the trials. So the buggy fist? Buggy or fist. the iron buggy? Mousetrap fist. <laughs> the mouse fist. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, um, also it was a spectacular failure where a guy attempted to do it from the bottom and got slammed. So. First, let's, let's talk about some of the issues that are addressed. Uh, one, uh, I don't really care what you call it, guys. People get very militant about the names. I, there's been a lot of threads on Facebook, and that's pr probably I'm more there than, than any other place uh, of the social media. But guys, it's called the mousetrap. Really? Here's the video of the first mousetrap applied 15 years ago. Really? You have scoured the records from a hundred years ago. Interestingly enough, there is one um, one uh, sort of pictures of Ma uh, Matt Hughes controlling the back, the way you know, rather than kind of hunting for the for the choke when the guy is on his knees, both guys facing down, with his hands much forward and crushing down the hips. There was a and then there were pictures exactly the same thing from eighty years ago. And there's a chance somebody might have done it 200 years ago because then guys post pictures from pyramids or Greek uh, temples where guys are wrestling using the same moves that we're using now. Maybe they're better now, maybe they're more technical, but it might be the same move. So I really don't care if you call it um, uh, mousetrap. mousetrap, buggy choke. I call it buggy choke because I think the probably most people are familiar with the ones that the Rural Taller Brothers do uh, on, uh, on flow grappling and probably that's what most people can relate to but if it helps you to relate to it to call it fat chocolate cake bomb do it that that's up to you but understand guys that if you know you, you know your teammate might have invented it that thing might have existed 80 years ago or 200 years ago or maybe even longer before that just in a different format may have been slight adjustments so don't get so militant about the names, you know, like if you like to call it whatever you like to call it, that's, that's your business. So let's look at the, uh, uh, so we're going to call it buggy choke for most of the episode. So we've played, I played around with three of them and uh, the first one we already addressed, that's the most common one we addressed um, in, in, the, uh, in the episode like nine months ago. Um, guys, Von Flew. Von Flu is a great weapon, use it. Again, I'm sure somebody's gonna come out, it's, it's not Von Flu, it's Joe Blow. <laughs> well, Joe Blow, I used it, you know, 30 years before Von Flu, well, <laughs> that may be the case. But most people know it as Von Flu. Um, I'm gonna give you an example from history. The Dars, it's known as the Dars. Guess who popularized it at Henzo's, who was like sort of using it and showing it to other guys? John Danaher. However, it's Joe D'R.C. who went, you know, around the U.S. and, and where he was training in different gyms, the, gyms, academies. academies, you know, he would use it and they started calling it the Dars. Again, that's how it's known. So, Von Flu, guys, this is a, a good weapon. Can we call it the J-Rod? Because he did it the best. Well, maybe at some point <laughs> we'll call that. But he used the iron fist with it, oh, so. Okay. The J-Rod. Guys, it, same thing. Iron fist, diesel squeezel, uh, no gi Ezekiel. I like iron fist the best, so that's what I'm going to call it. So this is the one that, that uh, uh, the Real Tall Brothers use probably the most often. So I'm just going to go over it real quick because it's quite painful to be in these things. 
And this is gonna hurt both the, the bottom guy and the top guy. One, one other thing I wanna talk about. I'm not pro or anti this. Some people are like, this is complete shit. You know, using this stuff from the bottom, this goes against the principles of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, not really because when you're on the bottom side control, and this is the only thing available to, or maybe it's not the only thing available to you, hit it. I appreciate the fact that maybe the guy took you down past your guard, and now you're getting, uh, and, and now you're choking him. So that's nice. It actually goes with the spirit of jiu-jitsu. The guard is pretty much that. Um, so th I appreciate that. However, being on the other side is you took somebody down past their guard, and now. You're getting choked. It's sort of like being on somebody's back. You cross your ankles and the guy's ankle locking you with his feet because you made a mistake. So I'm not pro it or against it. It's actually quite a difficult technique to do well. You need to be fairly flexible and somewhat lanky uh, to, to be able to do it effectively. However, anybody should know the defense because the last thing you want to do is take the guy down, pass his guard, and get choked with this. <laughs> Be prepared that if you use these counters, they will be painful. So hopefully you guys won't make me do that too many times because I've been teaching this in my school for the last couple of days. And I think my, my head, head hurts, my ears hurt, and my neck hurts. So let's start with the, uh, we're gonna set it up the right way, yeah, from here. So as I'm passing, Enrique kicks out. So there's two possible ways I can have this. So one is, if my hand is above, it's free. This is good. So guys, what I do is, do not lift. Do not lift. We're going to go over what happens if you lift somebody. So I kind of brace my neck a little bit. So what I'm doing is, my shoulder is on my jaw, my hand is on the floor, and I'm sort of supporting my head so it's more, his power is more focused on the back of my neck than in the front, or the constriction. Uh, it can happen, you can get constricted or choked, uh, even here, given enough time. But, <laughs> Enrique, I will make you pay for this. Uh, but again, this is my constriction is stronger. So I'm gonna turn him slightly to the side. My hand positioning is very important. I need to have my hand palm up on the shoulder blade. And now I go off my knees and just use my body weight. Whew. Guys, <laughs> see what we do for you? <laughs> it sucks being in there. And this is probably the one easiest to defend is with a Von Flu. So guys, the Von Flu is a great defense, uh, defense against guillotines. I, I get very frustrated with my students because we have very good guillotine within my team within my schools, but, um, and within the Henzo tribe as well. Uh, so if you clear their legs and you can bond flu people and you basically just take the top of side control waiting for the guy's arm to burn out, I, I think that's, you're not doing enough justice to, your, to the fact that you beat the guillotine. So you really need to make sure that, that you use bond flu. But again, it's arm positioning. I'm gonna do it one more time and then we're gonna move on to the other ones which are even more brutal and, and, and harder to defend. But guys, palm up on the shoulder blade. There is no power, there is no arm strength involved. It's purely body weight. Mike, you crack it up, what's going on over there? We wanna know, would you care to share the, the, the joke with the rest of the class? And lots of PSF, almost a double episode 19. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, Elon, we were actually, uh, saying I hope I hope we don't both go out at the same time and then you know when you kind of when you're out you kind of keep the same position and you guys are like watching what's going on <laughs> it is painful so let's do it one more time and then we move on because the other ones are even more same painful side, the side. Yeah, same side let's just keep it on the same side so this is actually uh, it's worse as I'm passing the guard and Mika locks it up so this time my hand got caught underneath so ideally, if I can, I just successfully trapped his arm. So my hand, my left arm, can go under his head. I'm going to tilt him towards me a little bit so I can get my hand on the shoulder blade. And now I come off my knees. 
and just use my body weight. Guys, the fact, the, the most important thing is shoulder forward, shoulder forward. You do not want to be, uh, just, uh, just stay down here. You don't want to be doing this. You're off base and the guy can roll you through maybe. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to have a good base and just focus on concentrating your body weight in that shoulder forward. That's what makes this choke happen. So my choke slash constriction is stronger than his. I'm bracing myself long enough to make sure that if, if I stayed in that constriction for five minutes, it, 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 I would go out for sure. Except mine is working much faster than his. All right? So again, I use my leg to try to pin his arm. But sometimes what happens is, especially if we reverse, guys, by the way, there's so many variations. There's reverse buggy choke, reverse mouse trap, reverse bunt cake, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's so many different variations, but all of them have a logical answer. So on the reverse one, so this time, it's on the same side. So I, don't, I cannot do von Flu because it's not going to happen. So my hand, again, is free. So this time, what I'm going to do is apply, ideally, I'd like to connect my hand to hand, but you don't have to, is push on the guy's neck. Just like, you know, when, when you first learn in jiu-jitsu, headlock escape, it's the same, same idea. Push on the guy's neck. And this is the only time you're actually going to notice that when you're trying to lift somebody. So if I'm in a buggy choke, I try to lift them. Look what happens to my neck. You open up your neck. And that's when that stuff starts to kick in. And, and then people panic. Even high-level guys start to panic. So if you don't know what you're doing, the, the defenses are fairly simple. They're painful. <laughs> yes, I will not lie to you. They are very painful. But they work. But you cannot do this. You cannot lift because now you're elongating your neck and now making the choke. It's actually constriction, but uh, work harder. One more time. So the reverse one is, is this time my uh, left arm is trapped, so I cannot do one flu. I'll bring my forearm. I hope nobody complains about the audio. It's not the <laughs> microphone, guys. It's my head caught. And I just drive my weight. Once I get here, guys, I will keep that arm. I will, make, I will punish him for making things so painful to me. All right. Before we go down, before we go, go down to the uh, to the most difficult one, where you really cannot use your arm, that it's just not available, meaning that you cannot either frame on his on his neck, or you cannot use the von flu, which is the most difficult one, and by, by also most painful. Are there any questions? Let the let let some blood flow return to my brain and Enrique's <laughs> brain. We have unrelated questions, but we can fit them in. John Plant is asking, how hard do you row with your students, and do you have a rule that you teach to your instructors? Yeah, I'll roll. Uh, this is one of the things that's very important. Uh, it depends, uh, you know. Uh, so as you guys know, I have a very bad back since I was a kid. So my diaphragm helps support. The, it's, it's like a Jenga. It's like all screwed up, the, the lower spine. But long story short, uh, my diaphragm is used to to uh, to help support my spine in addition to breathing. So if I go hard, you know, uh, I will get gas within 10, 15 minutes. So if, my, if somebody goes hard with me, I'll go hard with them, but the training will be over within 10, 15 minutes. Cause basically I will, sometimes this is what happens. We start out nice and easy and then people start to feel like, okay, I'm not doing well enough. Let me up the intensity. I'll step it up with them. Um, they're still getting caught at the same rate. It's just coming a little bit harder than before. And so they're like, okay, let me up, get up some more. I do the same thing. And now it's, you know, becomes almost competition intensity. I've had those with, with Enrique as well. And I'm okay with it. It just, as long as there's a match in intensity. So one of the th problems that, that sometimes, uh, you know, sort of, sort of uh, less experienced practitioners don't understand is when you sort of, I start out with lower intensity and, and I, I'll, I'll feel what you have and then I'll try to match it. Is they don't understand that you're letting them work and they try to up the intensity. Then it's going to be over very quickly. It's within a few seconds. 
And usually people are like, oh, can I train with you? I'm like, listen, you know, I'm, I'm banged up. You want to go, but you set the pace. I'll adjust. And then they don't like working. They don't like rolling with me. So you got to be really careful with that. And I tell my in, in, instructors and in purple belts and above, you need to... You need to read the intensity very quickly because we've had that, we had a recent uh, uh, a, uh, a visitor where the guy wound up training five years, primarily Nogi, but um, he wore a white belt to class and, you know, a purple belt went with him and he's, you know, it's a white belt, let me, and then the guy dove into a, you know, what I would consider a very crappy arm bar and, and the other guy was not ready for it. And I, and I said to him, I said, listen, you have to read, you have to have a very good handle on, on the intensity pulse because you, at the second you feel it's up, you have to up yours. Because that, up yours. <laughs> I cracked myself up. But that's what leads to inj injuries is, is the, you know, is the mismatch of intensity. So again, you need to have, um, a good sort of match of intensity and and again i let the lower belt set the set the pace and then i match it so let's go back to the to the um all right so this is the the hardest one where uh so my hands are not in a position to do anything when that happens guys i start to Spread my shoulders. Basically, what I'm looking to do is survive long enough where his where his where his structure starts to come apart. This one is the most miserable one because you don't have a strong enough structure to make his collapse. It's his his collapse is by over time. It just starts to slowly come apart. This one is the most miserable one. Again, don't try to lift. What I'm trying to do is when I'm caught in it is just try to almost like spread my shoulders, um, open up my back as much as you possibly can and slowly sort of have the guy's grip start to come apart. And when, when you feel, okay, it's slipped, then you the bust out. Obviously, guys, if, if uh, so set up, the, set up the buggy choke. That's, that's your best defense is read it before it happens. You know, obviously that's the best defense. It's as soon as you feel the guy reaching over the, over your back, is get out before they have a chance to lock it up. But if they, I'm going to do this one more time, and then we're going to go to other questions, guys, hopefully, because... <laughs> so both arms get trapped. Now I make the guy pay for for things. <laughs> but you made me do it. Why do you make me pay for it? I feel pain. <laughs> so, again, this one is the most difficult one. What you need to do, guys, in those situations is stay composed. Don't panic. So normally, a lot, a lot of the buggy chokes are being used in Nogi, and we were thinking about doing it next week. But uh, first of all, there's a lot of interest in it this, be this week in particular. Plus, you know, with the gi, you know, it's, it's easy to see the contrast between the grips so, uh, and, and, and the lockup. So we figured we'd do it today. Mike, do we have any questions, please? <laughs> Takedown Breakdown says, feel privileged to be here. Love your content. Just bought the split guard instructional a few days ago on, BJ, on BJJ Fanatics. Awesome. I appreciate it. Guys, I always appreciate the uh, also reviews on BJJ Fanatics, assuming you like it. <laughs> Hope you do. Don't leave a bad review. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, don't hesitate next time in the next few episodes. Once you go through it, if there's any follow-up questions, I'm happy to address them. Um, again, guys, we already have over 200 videos on this. So if, if sometimes if there's a, an issue, just do the search, Silver Fox, BJJ, uh, whatever the specific technique is, and it usually pops up very easily, very quickly. So... Um, and then if there's still has something unclear, we're happy to address it on here. I mean, that's the whole reason for this format. And we're just about to hit time. I will fit in from Adolfo Ferranda. What preventative steps are there to not even let them get to the point of locking up the buggy choke? Oh, the, we, just, we just went over it. So, 
It's, it's like, so as, as I'm passing, as I feel him going over my back, to notice what I'm, so as I feel him locking up over my, so look what happens to my, my arm. I slide it down. So my right arm slides down, so it's not that easy. So his grip starts to slip immediately. My left arm, I start to lift. So his right arm, so my left arm pushes his left arm up, so it never gets into play. And I slip my head. This is painful again, guys. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing my pain <laughs> with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And just like that, we're out of time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much. Well, <laughs> we did. As I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jam Baseball just said, I think Enrique is loving this episode. <laughs> 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 guys, we will see you next week. Guys, uh, uh, don't forget, um, I got a ton of camps coming up. Uh, first one is in Czech, mid-June. Um, that's a lot of fun. If you like medieval castles, you know, history, good weather, you know, it's going to be, should be pretty warm, but not too hot. That one's for you. We have one in Sicily, June 22nd to 26th. So there's, uh, we're going to see Mount Etna, winery, beaches, good Italian food. Um, then I have another one in Czech, which is in Ju uh, July, but I don't have a firm date yet. Uh, and then I have one in, in, in Germany, beginning of September. And then I'll have one in Holland, end of September, beginning of October. Holland is amazing if you like Amsterdam, but other than that, the weather sucks. It's going to be cold and rainy, but wonderful jiu-jitsu. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you next week. Guys, like, share, subscribe. Yes, that too. Follow us. <laughs> Follow Fox on his tour around Europe. <laughs>